Good evening. I'd like to welcome you all to the December 9th, 2021 meeting of the Portsmouth City School Board. I ask now that you please stand with me as we observe a brief moment of silence. Thank you, you may be seated. We do have some special VIP guests with us here on this evening, and I'll ask that Dr. Bracey would now introduce them at this time. Thank you, Dr. Patillo, and good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is my pleasure to welcome this evening special guests, as Dr. Patillo mentioned, from Churchland Preschool Center under the direction of Ms. McIntyre, who's, our, who's the principal there. And She's going to come forward, and as she does, I will start by introducing the students. The first that's doing the Pledge of Allegiance, that's Parker Reed Zakowski. If you will come. And I will. Okay. And parents, feel free to come up here on the front area if you want to take pictures. Um, that's, that's not a problem. So leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance is Parker Reed Zakowski. Parker's teachers, Mrs. Crystal Hayes and Ms. Janice Barco. Parker's favorite food is chocolate. His, his favorite toy is Transformer Cyberverse. And his favorite thing to do is to go to Chuck E. Cheese. Parker plays soccer, and when he grows up, he wants to be a police officer. Parker's mother is Michelle Zakowski. The school statement, Aubrey Sky Owens. Aubrey is here to read the school statement. Her teachers are also Mrs. Crystal Hayes and Miss Janice Barco. Aubrey's favorite food is chicken. Her favorite <laughs> toy is the dinosaur from dance class. And her favorite thing to do is cooking in a restaurant. Aubrey is in gymnastics and those where she does flips and going flips are going to come in handy because she wants to grow up to become an astro astronaut. You're always flipping in that zero gravity. Aubrey's parents are Ms. Cherie Owens and Mr. John Owens and her sister, Amaya. And with this, and after that, we'll have a special presentation and that's from Kendall Ray, Victoria Austin. We, we are in for a special treat. As you know, usually in our last meeting of the year, we're treated to a holiday musical performance. However, given the restraints on group rehearsal time, we elected to have a special student performance instead. Kendall Ray Victoria Austin is here with us to share a poem. Her teachers are Ms. Tracy Mack, Ms. Janice Lamone. Her favorite food is pizza, and her favorite toy is her Care Bear. But she also loves to play with her dolls. Kendall is a member of Dynamics Movement for the School of Performing Arts, and she has recently participated in the purse drive for a local women's shelter. When she grows up, like Parker, she wants to be a police officer. Her mother is Mrs. Nicole Austin, and her dad is Mr. Kenneth Austin, and she is the brother of Nathan and sister Noel. So at this time, I would um, like to recognize the parents. If they're here with you all, please uh, be recognized. Parker's parents. Uh, if you all. <clears throat> all right, and the parents of Aubrey Owens. <clears throat> and Kendall Ray Victoria Austin. <clears throat> As you all know, Mr. Austin is, is a PPS proud. <laughs> he's, our, he's our health and PE coordinator. All right, so at this time, Parker, I will let you get us started with the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening. My name is Parker Zukowski. I go to school at Churchland Preschool Center. Please stand, my teacher, is Miss Hayes and Miss Barcos. 
class. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My, my name is Aubrey Owens. I'm in a church, a student at Churchland Preschool. In Miss Hayes and Miss Barco's class. Dr. Patel School Board Chairman. Miss Agus and Vice Chairwoman. Miss Agus, Miss Agus and Vice Chairwoman. School board members. Dr. Bracy, Superintendent. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is a day at Churchline Preschool is so exciting. Here's, here's what we do is so inviting. We start with a yummy breakfast, just to name a few, cereal, juice, and milk. Always gets us through. Announcement time is so defined. Listen to our pledge line by line. I'm in a churchland preschool panda, gentle and kind. I learn to care, share, and use my mind. I recall every error because I have panda power. Good job. Good job. Learning time is so much fun. Reading and math, we are not done. Using, using technology to learn our way. To brighten our future for each day. Our storybook character day showed us how we are alike and different in so many ways. Community supporters, and parents too. Help our schools stay together like glue. The administrator, teachers, and staff. They love us so. They guide our path and watch us grow. And why don't we won't stay little for now? For now, this is where we belong. Churchland Preschool, your present, your future. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kendall Ray Victoria Austin. My name. I am a pre-K student at Churchland Preschool. I am Ms. Mack in Ms. Lemoyne's classroom. I have a poem to share with you. I am somebody. I am capable and lovable. I am teachable. Therefore, I can learn. I can do anything when I try. I respect myself and others. I will be the best I can be each day. I will not waste time because it is too valuable. I am too precious and bright. I am somebody, and so are you. You better do it, big girl.
Yeah, yes, go ahead. All right, if you all will stay before you go to your seat, if they will, we have something for them. Thank you, thank you all again for coming and sharing your gifts and your talents with us and your and the parents for doing such a great job uh, with our students and your children. Let's give them all a hand again. All right. Agenda item 4.6 is a school board mission statement that will be read by Ms. Hines. Thank you, Chair. The mission of the Portsmouth Public School Division is to engage all students in learning that will foster academic excellence and responsible citizenship. Thank you so much. Agenda item 4.7, attendance. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Dr. Cotton. Present. Mrs. Hines. Here. Mr. Pan. Present. Mrs. Shoemake. Here. Mrs. Thomas. Present. Mr. Titwich. Here. Dr. Whitaker? Here. Dr. Patillo? Here. Eight members are present. Thank you so much. Agenda item 5.1, uh, public comment for non-agenda items. Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers? Yes. As part of the school division's dedication to full transparency and collaboration in decision making, the school board of the city of Portsmouth allocates time for public comment at every regular meeting of the month to hear directly from citizens on matters of public concern regarding Portsmouth Public Schools. If you wish to address the school board, you must register with the clerk of the board ahead of the scheduled meeting start time. During public comment, each speaker will have five minutes to share their comments with board members. Speakers are not allowed to yield their time to another speaker and they are not to make any formal resolutions, declarations, or proclamations as part of their comments. Speakers are reminded to maintain decorum and respect while addressing the board. Specifically, no individual personnel, student, or family should be named in comments as speakers are at their own risk of violating confidentiality laws and or defaming the subjects of their comments. Neither the school board, the superintendent, nor school administration will respond publicly to any comments by speakers. A written copy of speaker's comments can be left with the clerk of the board and any matter, matter requiring a response will be directed to the superintendent and school administration to address as needed. As the board opens to public comment, the audience is asked to be respectful of all speakers. Our first speaker is, Mrs. Doc is Dr. Andrea Brown. Good evening, Good Dr. Evening. Bracey, Chairman of the Board, members of the Board. I am grateful to stand before you this evening to share a little about Causeway Academy. But before I do that, I want to share a little about myself. I am Dr. Andrea Brown, 15-year veteran of the Armed Forces. I've served in the city of Portsmouth at various schools, New Directions, Hodges Manor, James Hurst, and Douglas Park. With that, I've also served three years in, J in Japan, Dodia, as a special education teacher, chairperson, PBIS coach, and administrator for two and a half years at Lees in Leesburg Residential Treatment Facility. I come before you this evening to let you know Causeway Academy is on its way. You may ask, what's Causeway Academy? 
Causeway Academy will be a private day school for individuals with special needs, grades kindergarten through fifth. You say, why? Why do we need a private day school in the city of Portsmouth? Because there is none. We need one. As I said, I've served for 12 years as a special education teacher. And in the trenches, I've seen many of our special ed students, they're not getting all that they need. Not saying that our teachers aren't doing what they need to do, but our students in a classroom size of 15, 20, they're not getting what they need. I have the heart, the passion, the love, the skills, the knowledge to bring to Portsmouth what our students need with special needs to ensure that they are successful and productive citizens just like the ones we just saw. Our students with special needs can get there too. So please, I ask that you take into consideration once the doors of Causeway Academy opens, it will be soon, I ask that you support us, giving us the procurement to let us be a part of the city, asking that the LEAs share with you all that there is a need to support Causeway Academy. Are there any questions? Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Ms. Kara Hare. Good evening. Thank you for letting me speak tonight. Um, I wrote a letter to the school board. I didn't think to address it to you, Dr. Bracey. I'm not sure why, but um, most of you did respond, and I thank you so much for taking the time to read my letter and to respond to me. Um, and since writing the letter, there has been a, a have been a couple of changes in policy, but I still want to read my letter in its entirety, um, just so that the public has. Um, an idea of kind of what's been going on at schools. So, um, dear school board, I would like to begin by extending my gratitude to you all for listening to the needs of PPS educators. When we shared with you our stress over scheduling time for lesson planning, meeting, professional development opportunities, parent conferences, and so much more, you made those much needed changes to the district calendar and we appreciate it. You probably don't hear it often enough, but thank you for listening to our needs and thank you for everything you do. It's evident that you care deeply about the needs of the students and staff at Portsmouth Public Schools. It is because I know that you care that I feel comfortable coming to you with my concerns. I feel that our elementary school students and teachers are struggling with another change that was made due to COVID-19. At the beginning of the year, we did not know what we would be facing as far as the spread of this virus from student to student within the school buildings and so we put into place as many mitigation strategies as possible to prevent tragedy. It is becoming clear, however, that the spread of COVID-19 from student to student at school is very low. And so I would like to ask that we make a change for the benefit of all. Our elementary school students have been confined to their classrooms while teachers have been traveling from room to room. This is a hindrance to both students and teachers in many ways. With physical education, space and equipment are limited. Students have been unable to use the gym for physical education, even though it has been used for small group meetings, dismissal, and even to host parks and recreation. Logically, it just doesn't make sense that the gym can be used by everyone else, including people from outside the school, but can't be used by our own PE teacher. Students from around the school share the cafeteria. Why not the gym, library, art, and music rooms? With art, projects are limited. With Encore teachers traveling from room to room, access to supplies is much more limited. The art teacher has to be able to fit all of the supplies that she needs for as many as four different grades at a time on one cart. That's at my school. I'm not sure about the others, but we have four um, in a row. She'll be unable to use a multitude of media with her students like paint and clay because of the amount of space these projects take up. With literacy, it's limited. How many books can you fit on one cart? How many students can fit around that cart at one time? After a year of students not having access to the library at all, it is absolutely heartbreaking to have to limit their reading choices and checkout time. Intermediate level classroom teachers are stifled. Classroom teachers put a lot of effort each year into organizing and decorating their rooms. They have posters and word walls relating to their subject, supplies, 
and a flow. Maybe in one subject it makes sense to have students in rows, while another curriculum relies on groups. The intermediate students should also have the opportunity to begin switching classrooms so that they are prepared for similar transitions when they move to middle and high school. The reasons for limiting movement at the elementary level made sense in September, but we can see through PBS COVID dashboard that the risk of transmission between students at school is low and it is safe for students to travel to their encore and departmentalized classrooms. Sharing desks is a concern, but if we allow just a couple of minutes between classes for a quick wipe down, we shouldn't see any more spread in the classroom than we do in the cafeteria. Yes, safety is our number one priority, but the quality of education is important too. As safety concerns are minimal, we should be reevaluating this particular mitigation strategy. Thank you so much for your time and consideration with this matter, and thank you again for making the decisions that are best for PPS students and staff. Thank you so much. Ms. Lisa Petrie. <laughs> Good evening, members, citizens, and school employees. I'm here tonight to share my concern for the future of the city of Portsmouth and Portsmouth Public Schools. My name is Lisa Petrie, and I've been teaching in Portsmouth for 18 years. Last week, when word spread through our building that every city employee would get a Christmas bonus, I thanked God. I was moving slowly into my second hour, standing at my classroom door, manning the hallways, trying to keep 27 students from climbing the walls, waiting for buses that sometimes come more than two hours late. My colleagues and I have been standing on these doors uh, every working day for 14 weeks. I couldn't find anyone in the doorway who had more information about these bonuses, so I called the appropriate office to inquire about the amount and when they would be distributed. I was already thinking how I would use this uh, for Christmas. The woman I spoke to excitedly explained that frontline workers were to get $1,500 and other vaccinated employees would get $750. And I asked, well, which are teachers? Uh, she responded that she had been instructed to direct all of those inquiries to the Human Resource Administration Department and that it would need to be in writing. It took one phone call, two departments, one email, and a callback to tell me that teachers are not city employees. Before an unnecessary explanation of where funding comes from, I want to remind you that we were right here in 2018 when the city gave their employees a bonus, except for the teachers also right before Christmas. We lost many teachers that year. This year we cannot afford to lose one. So I'm really hoping that this board has a plan to retain the teachers that we already have. Uh, the teachers that are picking up the slack for those $1,000 90-day employees that collect their money and leave. Um, this is definitely not about whose pile of money um, pays for which bills. This is about a group of extraordinary people who stay hours after they're paid to make sure students are taken care of, who also take time from their own children to give hours of volunteer time to any and all activities before and after school, from food distribution to supply giveaways to trunk or treat drives to awards, these folks are the center of their communities, and this is about how we felt so left out and let down last week. We're exhausted and demoralized, uh, and rather than recognize all of the city workers who contribute to the success of the city of Portsmouth, who got $56 million in COVID relief money, they chose to acknowledge again that they have no regard for teachers, for the jobs we do, or for the hard feelings they inevitably cause their teachers once these bonuses are passed out. Again, we are publicly humiliated and disregarded right before Christmas. I'm sure the employees working for the city deserve these bonuses. They must be putting in at least five extra hours every day of work for the city. But did they also get asked to do extra other city jobs uh, due to shortages? I mean, were police officers asked to work in the kitchen or drive the buses? Were, were firemen asked to do a garbage man's job? Because the teachers were. Um, and I, I can't even imagine where you would find the time to work in the kitchen when we're already working till 10, 30, 11 o'clock every single night on paperwork. Um, this city who uses our data to brag about national awards given to two of our elementary schools, the children were just here from those elementary schools and aren't they fabulous? Um, or the record amounts of scholarship money given uh, to our city by our students, um, our national recognized science programs, all of these things are originating with the teachers. But even though all of our data is used by the city of Portsmouth, 
they will not acknowledge that we even work for them over a $1,500 bonus, or was it a $750 bonus? Again, I'm hoping that this board has a plan to retain the teachers that we already have. Um, we heard the Virginia Beach took from their operating costs to give their teachers $3,500 for all their extra work. Cities all around us, teachers have been recognized as they should be for their hard work and dedication. In Portsmouth, again, our city won't even say we work for them. Our teachers are once again right before Christmas, uh, watching cities, in some cases closer to their own homes, giving their teachers bonuses. Um, I have never been so worried. I've been to this board before to explain the talk going on with different teachers about leaving, but I have never been this worried about this teacher shortage. Um, I know we got a 2% raise that we fought years for, and when we finally got it, it was spread over a period of four years, so it really doesn't even make about $8 a pay period. It's not enough to cover the tolls we have to pay to get to the city. But in closing, I want to remind you that I love teaching, as most of my colleagues do, most every single colleague does. Um, these children that we teach need us consistently. Uh, but that's not an open invitation to continue to put every single job that needs to be done offered onto our laps or into our laps, or um, an expectation of an extra 30 or 40 hours a week. I mean, what other profession does that? Um, I want to say in closing again, um, children are everywhere in need. Portsmouth cannot afford to lose one teacher. We're already doubled up, and I can't imagine tripling up. I can't even imagine it. So I'm really hoping that this board has a plan for retention. Um, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. And, um, and a happy new year. Thank you. Thank you so much for all that you do. I need to backtrack to agenda item 4.8. It was consideration for the agenda for December 9th, 2021. I would need a motion to approve the agenda. For the <laughs> Move for approval. Second. Thank you, motion made by Mr. Tillich, second by Mr. Parent. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Dr. Cotton. Yes. Mrs. Hines. Yes. Mr. Parent. Yes. Mrs. Shoemake. Yes. Mrs. Thomas. Yes. Mr. Tillage. Yes. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Dr. Patillo. Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you so much. Agenda item 6.1, student representative report, uh, Mr. Davis. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Patillo, Vice Chair Atkinson, Dr. Bracey, board members, and all those assembled here, all those assembled here this evening. This is my final student representative report for 2021. In my report tonight, I will be highlighting the things that are going on in the division involving our students. Starting off with my division-wide school tours. On November 8th, I visited and toured Church and Middle School with Principal Mr. Paul Wilson. Next, I visited Church and Elementary School and Preschool, which are housed in the same building. I got opportunities to tour both parts of the building and meet several students and teachers. Thank you to both principals, Ms. Jack Ubowski and Ms. McIntyre for the hospitality. Last but not least for that day, I visited Church and Elementary School. I had the opportunity to tour the school and visit a classroom of sixth graders, give them insight on what the student representative entails. Thank you to both assistant principals, Ms. Alexander and Ms. Smith, who were filling in for Dr. Jones for the, in the tour of the building. On November 9th, I continued my school tour starting at Brighton Elementary School, where I toured the building with Ms. Young, the principal. I got the opportunity to meet and see every student in the building. Thank you, Ms. Young, for the hospitality at the Beehive. Secondly, on that day, I visited Lakeview Elementary School, where the principal there is Ms. Moody. I toured Lakeview and walked every hallway and met and saw every student in the building. Thank you to Ms. Moody for the hospitality. Last but not least, I visited West Haven Blue Jays, where I got a chance to tour the building with my former assistant principal, Dr. Grisby, and now principal of West Haven. I went to every classroom at West Haven to see students and teachers. I even saw my former assistant principal, Mr. Lunsford, who is now assistant principal at West Haven. I now have seven schools down and 15 more to go. For student recognition, I'd like to recognize Sydney Brooks, who is a junior at Churchill High School. Sydney is the CEO of Rich Accessories, which sells accessories, clothing, and jewelry. 
Sydney started her business January 3rd, 2020. Sydney has always said she wants to work for herself, and she asked herself why not open a business. She saw many female students wearing bracelets around school and thought that she sh should sell and make bracelets. Sydney started by only selling bracelets and now sells more than a dozen assortment of things. Here's the interesting part. Sydney recently hit six figures for her, for her business on Black Friday, which was a goal she set for herself. Sydney's favorite quote is a quote by rapper Lil Baby. If you can make $1,000, you can do the same thing 10 times to get $10,000, then never stop. If you'd like to, if you'd like to support Sydney, you can visit her website at www.richaccessories.bigcartel.com or visit her Instagram page at Rich Accessories. Portsmouth Public Schools really does produce smart and talented students. Last but, not least, last but not least, sports. I'd like to recognize our varsity football players who made the Eastern District all teams from each of our high schools. Starting off with Churchland High School. First team defense from Churchland, Dorian Stittman, Keyshawn Key, Cameron Flood. First team offense from Churchland, Tyler Edwards, Keyshawn Boone, and Brandon Hillman. Second team defense from Churchland, Keyshawn Boone, Brandon Hillman, Travell Brown. Second team offense from Churchland, Brandon Hillman, Jordan Riddick, Caden Karras, and Dylon Battle. Honorable mention from Churchland, Jordan Riddick, Jeremy Shepard, Dorian Stittman, Keyshawn Key, Tony Cross, Jayshawn Campbell, Sheldon Carter. Now on to Manor High School, second team defense from Manor, Kydell Painter, Javion Whitfield, Amarion Collins. Now on to defensive honorable mention from Manor, Jalen Harris. Second team defense from Manor, Javion Boone and Amarion Collins. Offensive honorable mention from Manor, Raquan Mills, Justice Page, Jaime Mitchell. Now on to, great, now on to the great I.C. Norcom. Second team defense, Jamari Earls, Jaden Ratliff. Defensive honorable mention, Kendall Hall Edwards, Jaden Ratliff. First team offense from Norcom, Darian King. Offensive honorable mention from Norcom, Jerron Ratliff, and Matthew Allen. Also want to recognize the barbering students at Norcom who recently, I took a chance <laughs> on another day to get my hair cut. It was actually good. <laughs> I want to thank the teacher, Mr. Um, Pastor Wilkins, for his hospitality, and his student, Jerron Gamble, for giving me an edge up on that day. They also wanted to know that they wanted the school board to come visit them to see how they cut hair, and maybe they cut. <laughs> but that's my report for December. Thank you very much for the opportunity to serve the students of some Public Schools. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much, Janari. Thanks so much for a thorough and detailed report. And, I, and you being a leader that I, I admire, I will follow your lead and get me an edge up at Ashley Norcom as well. So <laughs> you, you, you let them know I'm on my way to get me one. Uh, Ms. Hines. Thank you. Um, Janari, it's always good to see you. It's always good to hear from you. Um, and the laugh is just contagious. So I just wanted to say thank you for what, you've do, what, you, what you're doing. Um, thank you for introducing the role of student representative to those young leaders um, in those classes at the elementary schools when you get a chance. That's awesome that they get to see and hear from you and they have something that they can aspire to. So I just wanted to let everybody know when I asked him what he was doing for Christmas break, I said, are you going to get some sleep? He said, he said, Sarah. I mean, I've, we've known each other for years at this point. He's like, Sarah, I don't sleep. So I just wanted to let everybody know he doesn't sleep and he is always that busy. He's like, I think I'm going to get some golf in and we got some sports teams that are playing. So Janari's always on the go and I just wanted to rec I just wanted to recognize the go attitude that you have and that I am forever thankful for it and for the energy that you bring to this um, as we have come into this year not knowing how it was going to roll out and you've just rolled with the punches and have made it the best. So thank you very much. Um, he also has a paper that he needs to go write tonight for his um, government class. So um, good luck with that paper as well, sweetheart. Okay. Thank you, sir, so much. <laughs> agenda item seven is consent agenda for 7.1 through 7.4. I will entertain a motion for approval at this time. Move for approval. Second. Motion made by Ms. Hines, second by me, Ms. Shoemate. Was there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Agenda item 8.1, our monthly curriculum and instruction report, Dr. Wynn. Good evening, Dr. Patillo and members of the board, Dr. Bracey. It is that exciting time again. We get to hear the curriculum and instruction uh, report. And as you can see from the written report, there are a lot of exciting things happening uh, in our schools and with our students. And I want to bring particular attention to uh, those of you who haven't been out to see our art exhibit, our first ever art exhibit in partnership with the Portsmouth Public Library downtown and Churchland locations. And we have some samples of those uh, displays in your packet. But that display will be on, uh, be there until January 7th. So that'll be a nice treat for you and your families during the winter break. Tonight we have a special highlight also from our English department. And we have Mrs. Ms. Khadija Alexander here to present that to you. Thank you, Dr. Wynn. Greetings, Chairman Patillo. Superintendent Dr. Bracey, members of the school board, and all those assembled. My name is Khadija Alexander, coordinator of Reading and English. It is with great privilege and honor that I stand before you tonight with a presentation from our department. The presentation brought forth this evening highlights students and teachers engaging in a structured literacy approach to reading. Before we begin, I want to share a few statistics and facts with you. 43 million adults possess low literacy skills. One in four children in America grow up without learning how to read. Nearly 85% of the juveniles who face trial in the juvenile court system are functionally illiterate proving that there is a close relationship between illiteracy and crime. More than 60% of all inmates are functionally illiterate. And children who read at least 20 minutes a day are exposed to almost 2 million words per year. With statistics and facts like these, who wouldn't want their child reading by third grade? The pandemic has brought about great challenges in reading as well as other areas. However, Portsmouth Public Schools are working diligently to overcome these challenges. They are instructing students on how to read and write daily. In this video, you will see just that. Please sit back and enjoy. Thank you. R E D Read. Greetings, I am Ms. D.J. Alexander, proud coordinator for the Office of Reading and English for Portsmouth Public Schools. My team, members of the faculty and staff, as well as our students, would like to share with you some of the exciting progress we are making to ensure our children are literate and responsible citizens. Hi, I'm Dr. Dina Sasanga, one of the program specialists for the Department of Reading and English. Purpose is an important word, and there's no greater purpose for Portsmouth Public Schools than to ensure our students are becoming skilled readers. Fulfilling our purpose to ensure all students are prepared to meet the profile of the Virginia graduate, we are implementing research-based literacy instruction that is explicit, systematic, and sequential. Here's Mr. Triwartha, one of our district reading coaches, to tell you more. The huge collection of reading research underscores that learning to read is a systematic process. The science tells us that students must first master phonological awareness, meaning students must master the 44 different sounds in the English language to become a skilled reader. Students participate in phonological tier one drills daily in the classroom and in small groups. Robert, hey, listen to my sounds closely, okay? Next, Portsmouth teachers are taking a research-based systematic approach to teaching letter and letter sound recognition before moving into phonics lessons. 
phonics tier one instruction helps students learn which letters in combination of letters work together to make different sounds. We're going to be looking at some uh, phoneme push it cards. These phoneme push it cards all have pictures of words that begin with the digraph. All right, so what is this picture? What is the axe doing? What do you think? Oh. It's chopping. You're going to get this, and you're going to get three of these. I want you to set it up just like me, and when we get it, we're going to sound out the sound like this. Watch me first with your eyeballs. Ch, ah, uh, p, chop. All right, this time do it with me. Ready, set, go. Ch, ah, uh, p, chop. Er, all right, I have some questions for you now. I have some questions. I, the word is chop, and you change the ch to a t. What's the word? Chop. Chop. Now I change the op to a um. Sound it out. Sound it out. Everybody, what's the answer? Chum. Chum is the When students answer. begin to master phonics concepts, learners are able to become fluent readers while improving their vocabulary and comprehension. Hello, I'm Mr. Evancheski. I teach for, uh, first grade at Victory Elementary. As teachers, we make a promise each year to give the best instruction possible through valid and proven resources, collaboration with division coaches, and continuous professional development. Portsmouth provides the tools to help fulfill that promise. Hi, my name is Heaven. I like reading because I like reading new things. It's Harvest time on the farm. Everyone is helping. I like harvest time, says the says pig. I am Dr. Green Campbell, Reading Interventionist here at Victory Elementary School. So I wanted to share that recently the Office of Reading in English has implemented a systematic research-based approach to literacy instruction and our students are experiencing great success. Recently during our progress monitoring efforts, we were able to see marked improvements in our students' phonological awareness. After analyzing the data, we found that at least 80% of our students in each grade level have grown in the areas of letter and sound recognition. These foundational components of letter and sound recognition are the basis and the framework to create a sound uh, good reader as students matriculate through the K-12 learning experience. I'm excited to see what else they will do. Ms. Hines. Thank you. Um, do, uh, Dr. Alexander, thank you for that. Because um, I was not one that learned through phonics. I learned through memorization. And my child in the fifth grade can tell me more words than seemingly what I can tell myself some night. So thank you uh, for doing what you're doing. Has there been any consideration given for purchasing the clear mask, especially for like our K2 or K3 teachers that are still teaching phonics? simply because with a mask and not being able to see the mouth function of of certain sounds and certain combinations i don't know if it would be beneficial for our teachers to have those clear masks so as they are instructing because you know, hearing and, and and listening is also watching people talk as well so um i would i would think maybe we should see if we can find some you know i know we have them for the speech and for uh, that but especially for our k3 teachers who this is their life um, for two hours a day while they're teaching phonics that might be beneficial to them thank you yes absolutely. yeah and I, absolutely. I think it's something we definitely can look into i know we i tried them in our uh, pre-k program in virginia beach but they tend to fog up 
yeah. as well while the teachers are talking. So that could be an, yeah. another okay. reason why they decide not to use them. I will do some research on that. Right, yeah. And look into it. And I think we are using them with some of our special services. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all you. so much. Thank you. And I just want to reiterate, uh, Dr. Wynn, uh, you've already issued approval for the use of gems and uh, libraries already, correct? Yes, sir. Just making sure. It Thank you. Done. All right, agenda item 8.2, the fiscal year 2020-2021 annual comprehensive financial report and student activity fund report, better known as the CAFR. Dr. Bracey. All right. Thank you, Dr. Patillo. Tonight we're pleased to have representatives from Clifton Larson Allen, the external audit firm for the school division. They will be presenting the results of the fiscal year 2021 annual comprehensive financial report and student activity fund report. All right. well, good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Thank you. Right, my name is Greg Bussink. I'm a principal with Clifton Larson Allen. Um, we go by CLA now. It's a little shorter, a little, a little easier to say. Um, just like the uh, the ACFR it used to be the CAFR. It's, it's just it changed this year. Right. Um, the preferred term. It's, it's hard. Uh, People are still tripping over that a little bit. So, um, ACFR is now the new Afer, okay, <laughs> way to go. So, <laughs> well, it's, it's going to take a while to get used to. So, but uh, still the same great information included. All right. So, I've got a few slides, some information to share with you tonight. So, all right. So, I'll talk briefly about our approach, uh, the results. Um, it covers the annual conference financial report and the student activity or school activity funds. Um, we'll talk about the single audit make some required commu communications, and there are some new standards coming out for next year. Yeah. So um, our approach, um, we do have an integrated team. So we have a team of several folks that work with it, work on the school's engagement. Um, in addition, they work on the student activity funds engagement, and then we also coordinate with the, uh, the city's audit team. So we work together as one big team, work together, collaborate, there are some shared systems between the two units, so um, we talk early and often and communicate as we go through. So our approach is a risk-based approach. Um, so that involves um, risk assessment internally, and then we actually come out and we talk with management, we talk with folks from the board to get their input too, to get an idea of you know, there, what risks do they perceive, what keeps them awake at night, that kind of thing, related to financial reporting items. Um, <clears throat> we have communication during the process, um, we talk with management, uh, internal discussions, uh, formal status meetings, and then informal discussions as well. Next slide, please. So now I'll go over the results. So I'm happy to say that we issued an unmodified opinion. Um, another term for it is a clean opinion. It's the highest form of assurance that we can give. It's what you want. So um, that's a feather in the cap of management and everyone in the organization. They work hard to put this information together. I think everyone has a copy of the Annual Comprehensive Financial Report. So it's 143 pages. Um, beautiful cover on it, um, a lot of information. All that information, other than the five pages that we provide in our two opinion letters, are the re representation of management. So just as you look at that, think about the amount of time and effort it takes them to put that document together. Um, and one thing that's important to note is it's an award-winning document. So they get the GFOA and the ASBO certificate. They received it last year, they'll be applying for it this year. So that's, again, a feather in your cap. You have a good management team, they've been great to work with, and we want to thank them for all their help. Um, so internal control reporting, we had no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies that we identified. I, miss, I mentioned the risk-based approach. We do this, a similar approach for the activity fund audits. Um, we do reach out to all the schools, inquire, um, look at their policies and procedures, ask them to tell us certain information. We look at the bank reconciliations and confirmations for all schools, and then we, we kind of we go into the schools based on, again, a risk-based approach. We talk with management, get an idea where um, prior year findings have occurred, any risk they perceive, sometimes it's movement of folks within the, from school to school. So we take a look at that, and we do that every year, and we'll continue to do that. So next slide, please. Um, single audit status. The single audit is not completed. We're working on finishing that up. Um, we have a delay this year. It's related to um, OMB has not issued the final compliance supplements that we need to complete our engagement. So um, you can probably guess the two programs we had to test this year, the two big things. So uh, <laughs> Coronavirus Relief Fund and ESSERS. Big, um, you know, big dollar items that are coming in new, um, so they're higher risk. So we're waiting on guys. We've done a lot of the testing. We're just waiting to see if there's any additional compliance uh, requirements there. So um, pretty good shape there. 
Next slide, please. <clears throat> so now I'll go into the required communication. So you may have heard some of these before. Um, so I won't read the whole thing to you, but I'll give you an idea. So looking, our job is to issue um, our audit report on the financial statements that are the representation of management. I mentioned before that management prepares all the documents. They're also responsible for all the information. They report, record, all the summarize all those transactions throughout the year. Then they, at the end of the year, they produce this document that you um, are lucky to have tonight. So within that, there are some um, things you need to keep in mind. As you look at the numbers in the financial statements, it's always important to read the notes. The notes tell the story behind the numbers. They tell um, kind of what you do, how you do it. In addition to this document, the Annual Comprehensive Financial Report, it is very comprehensive. So there's a lot of things in there. There's a transmittal in the front that kind of introduces you to things. There's management discussion and analysis. That's a short, kind of condensed financial section. And it also has some discussion about the budget and then things that look forward. That's a good place to look. If you've got 10 minutes you want to read, uh, you know, if you're a fast reader, you might want to go through the whole 143 at night, but that's hard to get through. Um, even for us, they think sometimes it takes a little time to split up, but that information is very good there. So then you have the financial statements, the notes, and then there is required supplementary information, and then there's also statistical information, and then you'll see a compliance section in the back of it. So a lot of information there. Next slide, please. Um, preparation of financial statements. There are certain things within the financial statements that are considered soft numbers or estimates. So there are some things that you can see in GASB 68 and 75. So that's your pension and OPEB disclosures. Those, there are actuaries that are involved that um, produce those calculations. So we look at their work, we look at their qualifications, um, we look at certain um, inputs and outputs of that information to make sure it looks reasonable and up to standards. So we think that looks good. Depreciable lives of capital assets, those are certainly an estimate. And then your liability, so there's what's called incurred but not recorded or IBNR for workers' comp and your self-insurance um, for health insurance. Um, Really, the financial statement disclosures are pretty straightforward as far as the industry goes. There's nothing real controversial there or hard to, to get our hands around. Um, and the judgments, the significant estimates seem reasonable to us. So next slide, please. Um, no difficulties in performing this year's audit. And this was our first year engagement for us. So we're new auditors. So um, we're very pleased with the assistance that we got from uh, the budget and finance staff. Um, Mr. Falk and their whole team was great to deal with. Um, we got up the learning curve very quickly. Um, they made it easy for us. The information was readily available, well organized. So for first year engagement, we were very happy um, to be working with the school board. So thank, thank you again for everyone and to the board for their assistance too. No disagreements with management over um, financial reporting matters or any procedures that we wanted to perform as auditors. Um, we did ask management to sign a representation letter to us and they provided that with no questions. Um, Consultations with other accountants, there's two, just two things I'll talk about. There's really related to what they call opinion shopping. None of that occurred. We were hired this year, free and open competition. So um, for us, pretty good. Next slide, please. Um, no, so we identified no past adjustments, which are smaller adjustments, or any corrections that were required to be made to the financial statements. Next, please. Um, again, this is that first year engagement thing, no issues there. No additional findings that we want to report to you. Um, we have no findings in the internal control communication. There's nothing other than like manager letter comments that, that we need to discuss. Um, <clears throat> and I mentioned all the information that's included in the financial statements. When you read our opinion, we take, um, we provide a, a, opinions because there are opinion units when you look at the, the, the big major headings for the funds. Um, but there are, there's certain information that we don't provide an opinion. We don't provide an opinion on the transmittal, um, MDNA and the other RSI is in relation to it. So we look at that compared to what's in the financial statement statistics section. Statistical, we don't apply an opinion on that either because some of it's non financial data. We do look at the data to make sure that the information that we can is consistent with the financial statements. Next slide, please. Um, upcoming gadget pronouncements. So these are, um, you know, the standard setters are always busy, um, yeah. lots of things going on. So the new one is leases. So effectively, any long-term leases now are going to be required to be capital leases going forward. We don't think it would have a big impact on the school system, but it's something they need to consider. And then subscription-based um, IT arrangements, um, managers is certainly aware of that and looking into both of these. Next slide, please. So that's everything I wanted to share. Again, I'm Greg Bussink. Uh, Kara Rickman um, was my manager on the engagement, and she was very helpful. She was, uh, she just wanted me to compliment management and thank them for all their help. And uh, I'll ask um, if you have any questions. Thanks so much, Mr. Blessing. It's glad to meet you in person. Uh, yeah, uh, good to see you. We, we had a great, great, great interview, right? It's so great being going out to meetings again. 
see decorations. <laughs> I, I was just, when I pulled in tonight and saw the lights out front, I was like, oh, it's so good to be back out. And, <laughs> and I also want to thank you and your firm for a smooth transition after many years with uh, one firm and our first year uh, engaging with you all. We want to thank you for a smooth transition with that as well. You're very welcome. Uh, Mr. Parent. Sir. Having gone through a, just finished going through an audit myself with an auditing firm, I know how, how important it is to compliment Mr. Falk because auditors come in, an auditing firm comes in and audits, but the staff must provide the auditors all of that information in order for you to do your job. And I want to publicly compliment Mr. Falk and his financial staff because <laughs> I'm, I'm on the finance committee of the school board and when he said that we were changing auditors, I said, oh, Mr. Falk, because you've got a whole new set of rules because mm -hmm. we've had the other, I'm not going to mention, but the other auditors and now we've got you and I know that he has worked and he and his team have worked and I want to publicly comment to him and say thank you, Mr. Falk and your staff because you well deserved. Thank you. And thank you for a clean Audit. Oh, you're welcome. Well, really, the, the opinion mean, we provide, but it's really management's all, it's all, all their the assertions, so. Right. Thank you. Couldn't thank do you without so them. Exactly. Thank you. Were there any other questions from board members? Thank you so much, sir. Thank all right, well, thanks. Everyone have a uh, happy holidays and a happy new year. Same to you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Ag Agenda item 9.1. Consideration of expulsion, discipline case number 2021-2203. Uh, entertain a motion at this time. Move for approval. Second. Motion has been made by Ms. Hines, second by Mr. Parent. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Yes. 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 Thank you so much. Agenda item 9.2, consideration of, expul of an expulsion, discipline case 2021-2204. I entertain a motion at this time. Move for approval. Second. Motion made by Ms. Hines, second by Mr. Parent. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Yes. 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 Thank you so much. Agenda item 10.1, monthly report. Superintendent, Dr. Bracey. Thank you, Chairman Patillo, board members. And here we are at the last meeting of the year. I will keep my comments brief tonight, but I have a couple of reminders I want to share with our staff and families. First, I want to share the exciting news that was sent out and you all um, heard it as well, and this is with Churchill Elementary School, mm -hmm. Churchill Academy Elementary School. Both have been recognized as best elementary schools in the country by U.S. News and World Report. So I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> They've earned this distinction following a ranking of more than 47,000 public elementary schools across the country. This is the first time that U.S. News and World Report has ranked elementary schools. However, as you know, this is following the news earlier this year that Churchland High School earned best high school distinction for, for the second consecutive year as well. So congratulations, Churchland Elementary, Churchland Academy, and to the principals, Dr. Jones, and it was at the time, it was Ms. Clark who was the right. principal where this, when this occurred. So we want to make sure we thank them as well. Next. As you have read and heard last week, we partnered with the Portsmouth Health Department to host a series of vaccination clinics for children of the ages of five and 17. The first of these clinics will be held at Church. The first of these clinics was held at Churchland High School yesterday. The second dose for that clinic will be on the 29th. The second clinic will be December 15th and January 5th at Waters Middle. I'm also excited to announce that the health department has added in another, another clinic for our students. The third clinic 
will have its first dose on December 22nd and the second dose on January 12th. This clinic will take place at Craddock Middle School. Additionally, there are plans in the works for three more clinics at elementary schools to take place when we return in January. With that said, please make sure to follow www.ppsk12.us forward slash vaccine for up-to-date details on new and current vaccine clinics. Finally, I do want to remind everyone that our winter break will begin next week. We will have an early release on Friday, December 17th for all students. Then all, all of our administrators and administrative, all of our schools and administrative offices will be closed on Monday, December 20th until January 3rd. Let me take this opportunity to wish all of our students, family members, staff, and community a safe and wonderful holiday season and enjoy that break. We're looking forward to a strong end of the year and welcoming everyone back in 2022. Thank you, sir. That concludes my report. Thank you, sir. And, and also before, before, I do want to make sure at your stations you, you see your, your gifts. So hopefully you look forward to those uh, each year. Yeah, yeah yes. so. Yeah, and you're looking at me as you say that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I say it before you say it to me. Uh, okay. So I want to beat you to it this time. And we want to say thank you and, and your wife, Ms. Brace, for always remembering us during the holiday season. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, and before I open it up for other further comments, I just want to reiterate uh, just a few of those concerns that we had, Dr. Wynn has approved the use of gymnasiums and libraries for our schools to begin using for their encore periods. Uh, that's already done. And also in the month of January, when we come back, Dr. Bracey and his team has already been working diligently um, discussing the options for bonuses for our staff and they will be presenting a report to us in January in reference to that. So they were already working on that prior to the concerns we heard tonight, but I just want y'all to be aware that that's already being taken care of and we should hear something on that in January. Ms. Shumick and you know, a bunch of others. So let's start with Ms. Shumick. <laughs> Ms. Shumick and Ms. Thomas, then we'll go down this way. Thank you, Chairman Patello. I'm gonna make this very quick. Um, I just have a few updates uh, because of course, uh, we have teachers and administrators who reach out to me, just want to let me know what's going on. So I do want to relay the message to the public as well. So Brighton will have a parent liaison meeting next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, the principal there, uh, Principal Garcia, would love for multiple board members to attend to judge the doors. So if you are available, please come out and judge the doors. Be there by 5 o'clock so that we can judge prior to the meeting, if that's okay. That would be next Wednesday at 6 p.m. But be there at 5 for the, for the board members to judge the doors. Um, parent liaison Keita Almond at IC Norcom. She is having a Christmas food drive. So she is accepting non-perishables, gift cards, turkeys, water, et cetera. Um, she is accepting the items uh, between December 9th through December 17th. And it will be distributed December 18th from 10 to 2 on the bus ramp. So if anybody would like to contribute to this, please contact uh, parent liaison Keita Almond at IC Norcom. Um, let's see here. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated um, now have their, they're accepting their scholarship applications for 2022. The deadline is March 18th, 2022. If you would like to um, apply for this scholarship, please visit PAC, P -A -C -D -S -T .org, slash scholarship or email scholarship at pacdst.org. And last but not least, um, before we leave, I would love to say happy birthday, early birthday to Vice Chair Atkinson and also Board Member Thomas. Their birthdays are in December, so we won't be able to actually celebrate with them, but you guys know by now, if I know somebody's birthday is coming up, we're going to sing happy birthday. So, <laughs> so if, yeah, we are. No, we're going to sing happy birthday. So if you guys could sing along. Yes, you ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Atkinson and Thomas. Happy birthday to you. Yay! Um,
Shoemaker. Thank y'all so much. Y'all sound mm -hmm. lovely. I'm, thank Miss Shoemaker. It's yes, also um, Miss Patterson's birthday Ms. as well. Miss Patterson. We okay, can't forget those that take care of well, us. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> See, look, people, the 17th. Okay, Sagittarius. Okay, and who else? Look, Mr. Carol, what in the world? So I need to know these things. I didn't know. Because I could have added them all along with the Atkinson Thomas, Carol. You know, it would have been that, Patterson, all of that. Well, happy birthday. Happy early birthday to you all. And uh, for those who are here and those who are watching, happy holidays as well. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Well, that was fun. Thank you for... <laughs> But um, that kind of goes to my comment. I just want to say on our last meeting of the year, um, this is myself and Burnt Board Member Tillage, first official year completing on the school board. And it's just been a pleasure. I want to formally thank all Dr. Bracey and all the staff uh, for just your patience, your communication, all the, our, my fellow board members for your partnership and leadership, uh, welcoming myself and Board Member Tillage for our first official year. I let, I'm not leaving you out, Dr. Whitaker, but I know you've been, been on this before. Um, so I uh, just wanna say thank you to everyone. And then on another note, this is a little business agenda item I wanna throw out there before we, um, before we go into the new year. Um, I know we had a discussion, this is Dr. Uh, for Mr. Falk, um, on the grant funds, and we were gonna look into just how you know, getting more information about how we can spend those things. I just want to add that back so that we don't lose sight um, as we go into our new year. Okay. All right. And <laughs> that's on the agenda for for January. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about okay. all of the funds that we receive and look at the plan of how we plan okay. to. All right. Spend. Awesome. Yeah, I know we were waiting for more yeah. guidance, so, yeah. so I we'll, appreciate we'll, that. Thank you, and congratulations on the clean audit too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And also, uh, I did it in the early session, but I also want to, again, uh, welcome Dr. Cotton to his first official meeting uh, on the Portsmouth School Board, and congratulations again on your recent election. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Parent. I think they probably left, but I wanted to say thank you to Churchill Preschool for our nice ornament. So, Please make sure that you, they're thanked because I, I love my snowman. I just hope that's not an omen to come and for us anyway. <laughs> but please thank uh, Dr. Bracey, please thank them. For the honor, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mr. Tillich. All right. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to provide an update um, from the Technology Operations Subcommittee. Um, I have a, quite a few updates. Um, in regards to the information technology, um, the upgrade to the division's time and attendance system has been completed. Um, system administrators, supervisors, and staff have been trained on the use of the new system, and the next phase will um, include the replacement of time clocks um, for each of the buildings. The division has also upgraded their um, telephone system to the newest, latest version. All division phones connect and communicate through the call manager. Um, operations, uh, Manor High School's gymnasium project is scheduled to be completed uh, next Friday, December the 17th. Uh, here comes the app, I mean, excuse me, here comes the bus app, um, which was launched a couple months ago. Um, to date, approximately has 1,800 parents who have signed up um, to track their students' bus. Con um, continuing to f uh, facilitate our division pandemic team, proactive measures are underway monitoring the new variant, um, as well as serving on a cross category team reviewing upgrades to scanning technology for security checkpoints in our schools. Uh, I want to thank the sheriff's department for their continued support um, to our division and helping us to ensure that our school division um, is safe for our students and staff. The planning for the second transportation department in service meeting for January 2022 is underway as it is required by the Virginia Department of Education as well as monitoring the progress of bathroom renovation projects at Manor High School and Churchland Middle School. Um, that is it for the report, but I also want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, um, and hope everyone has a very good break. Dr. Bracey, thank you for you and your team for all that you all do for this division, as well as to my fellow board members. Uh, it's been a great year, uh, one year down, three to go. And so I look forward to continued success of Portsmouth Public Schools. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Hines. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, I just had a few uh, requests for updates, um, hopefully at our January meeting. Uh, two would be for um, operations um, for the electronic signs that we ordered um, and the sign replacements for all the buildings. Where are we with that? Because we did have a few schools that were kind of on our ASAP list. Um, as far as replacement was concerned and then what that schedule looks like. Um, also, too, for our RFP for school zoning and school rezoning, um, where are we with that and what would that time schedule look like? Um, I also did have a question about um, maintenance and facilities. Um, are we planning on deep cleaning over break? Since nobody will be in the school for two weeks, are we going to have, is there a possibility of sending um, a deep, you know, we used to have the deep cleaning teams that would go around to the schools. Are, is there any plans to do any deep cleaning and opening up the schools um, over break for the, um, the team to get in there to do any cleaning um, as we are out for two weeks? Um, and then the last thing kind of goes along with um, the lady that, the second lady that spoke tonight the, about the letter and the opening up, you know, opening up the libraries and the gymnasiums for Encore. Um, but also, uh, have we given the clearance to open up the buildings for parents to come in? Um, speaking specifically about like academic awards or student of the month awards, um, what is the status of having parents and people coming into the building and just simply uh, from an elementary school student um, who's in sixth grade and you know these awards assemblies kind of go away once you hit middle school you know and we've had parents that are, have now missed two years of academic awards and student of the month or where are we with opening up the buildings and letting parents in for these these types of meetings. Thank you. I will get that information um, okay. for you, and we can we'll provide that with you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you all so much again for your attendance and for your patience. Uh, happy holidays to everyone, and we look forward to seeing you all again in a new year. Thank you, and good night.